All right, hi everybody, and uh, welcome back to 1908. It is now uh, March 20, or uh, May, I'm sorry, 29th, 1908, and we have the Senators at uh, 16 and 23 uh, going to Boston to take on the Red Sox at 22 and 18. The Red Sox, of course, the big surprise. Look at the standings. Boston is two and a half games behind Cleveland, and uh, they've been playing pretty well. Two-game winning streak now. They've been playing well at home, and uh, one of the reasons why they've played well is on the mound today, Eddie Seacott. Of course, the Senators in seventh place is no surprise to anybody. The Red Sox, though, in real life at uh, this time on this day, that is, uh, we're in last place. So we'll see what happens here. Otis Clymer climbs in against Eddie Seacott. Eddie Seacott with a 5-2 and two record, 3.01 ERA. That's not great for 1908, but he keeps winning. The rule is a 63 for a 31. It's a fly ball to center. And Thony has that for the out, and that is how this one starts. One away. So uh, the Red Sox uh, playing surprisingly well, and it's the sort of uh, surprise that comes along with a season like 1908. When you get the scoring down, all sorts of things can happen. Here's Bob Gainley, and uh, he rolls a 63 for a 31. Another... Uh, Another dice roll, another uh, version of the same result. Thony over in center field catches it two away. Jim Delahanty now rolls a 53 for a 19. Changed to an 18, and that's going to be an error. That's going to eat up. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's a good play, actually, by Heine Wagner, who fields it and throws to first for the out. And we go to the bottom of the first. There's no score. Here comes Amby McConnell. McConnell hitting 278, and he can get on base uh, with, the re with the best of them. Up against Bill Burns. Burns with a uh, 2.87 ERA, 5-3 and three of the record, and a 244 batting average against. Also not great. And the roll for McConnell, 35 for a 9. That's a single, and then he's caught trying to steal because of the little C, one away. Here's Harry Lord. He rolls a 61 for 32. It'll be a fly ball to right. Climber has that one, two away. Up is Gabby Kravis. And he rolls a 42 for a 14. So Burns gives up a walk, a rare walk. He's only given up now 14 this season. That'll bring up Doc Gessler. And uh, the question is, should we hit and run or not with uh, Kravis? And we probably shouldn't, missing the 11. So the roll is a 35 for a 9. And that's a single infield hit. And that sends Kravis to second. And now brings up Jack Thony. Runners on at first and second. Two outs, bottom of the first. And the roll is a 45 for a 14. That'll be a ball. Next roll is a 22 for a 7, and that's a single over to left field. That'll score one. Gessler goes over to third, and this is what uh, Seacott has had. A lot of very, very good luck that brings up Bill Kerrigan. So uh, Cy Young has had the bad luck, and Seacott the good luck. Here comes Kerrigan with runners on at uh, first and third, still with two men out. All of this has happened with two outs, and we're going to hit and run. The roll is a 43 for a 29, and it makes you wish you forgot about the whole thing. Ground ball back to Burns, who fields it and throws to first for the out. We go to the top of the second inning. It's a 1-0 uh, lead for the Red Sox, and here comes Jerry Freeman up against the famous uh, knuckleball pitcher. Freeman's roll 46 for a 29, and he hits that one back to Seacott, and uh, the throw is to first in time, one away. George McBride now rolls a 45 for a 14, and he walks. Now, Eddie's given up 21 of those walks, and that brings up Bill Shipka, and it may be time to bunt. And uh, the question is, can McBride fly? And, yeah, he can't really fly. So you see these 10 results are helpful, but we need an 11. Because otherwise, if we roll a 14, McBride is a dead duck. And the roll here is a 35 for a bunt for a 39. And that means that uh, the pit, the uh, runner, McBride, is picked off at first base. Uh, Krigger caught the pitch, threw over to Kerrigan quickly, and got him. Two away. Big defensive play by Boston. And the roll now for Shipka is a 24 for a 13, and he strikes out. First strikeout uh, registered by Seacott. And uh, we'll go now to the uh, bottom of the second inning. It's a 1-0 uh, game still for Boston. Here now is Heine Wagner. He's hitting 265. Was hitting better at the beginning of the season, and it's really dropped off. His roll is a 14 for a 43. There is a little E-roll. And it's a 46. That'll be out of the range. Fly ball to left. And Gainley's got that one, one away. Lou Krigger, the catcher now. Hitting 236. Probably should be hitting above Heine in the order. He rolls a 26 for a 27. It's a ground ball routine to Shipka, who's thrown out of first. Two gone. And here comes Eddie Seacott. He rolls a 44 for a 7, and that'll be a single to right, and that'll bring up McConnell. So runner on at first. Ambie McConnell again, who's one for one, but was caught trying to steal. Ambie's rolls a 51 for an 8, and that'll be a ground ball over to third. Shipka fields that, and he throws to first in time for the out. We go to the top of the third inning, and it's a 1-0 ball game. Here is Gabby Street. Street rolls a 61 for a 13 and strikes out. One away. Clyde Milan now. He rolls a 66 for a 0. Here we go. And it's another 66 for a 1. 
But Eddie's got an H, which reduces home runs, and his roll is a 31. So um, it is reduced down to a double. That will bring up Bill Burns. So a double for Milan, and that brings up Burns. One out, runner on at second, and uh, is probably going to have to bunt. Burns has a bunch of strikeouts on his card. Rolls a 16 for a 28. It's a good bunt over to the right, and Kerrigan fields it flips over to the second baseman McConnell covering at the bag. There's two away, and here comes Otis Clymer. Climbers rolls a 14 for a 43. Fly ball to left. Kravath is going to catch that one for the out, and that'll do it. We go to the bottom of the third inning, and it's a one nothing game still for Boston after all of that. Lots of adventure, huh? Four hits for the Red Sox, one for the Senators. Here comes Harry Lord. He rolls a 36 for a 30. It's a pop-up over to left, and uh, that's going to be fielded by Gainley. One away. Gavi Kravath up now. He rolls a 61 for a 40. It's changed to a 38. That'll be a ball. Next rolls a 14 for a 43. It's a fly ball to the left, and Gainley grabs that. Two away, and here comes Doc Gessler. And it's an 11 for a 0, so we go double columns again. And now a 32 for an 11. It's a single for Gessler, and he steals second base with Thony up there. So runner in scoring position now for Jack Thony, who's only driven in four this season, only 15 plate appearances. I think it wasn't until I realized he was starting it in real life that I put him in. And uh, his roll is a 22 for a 7. It's a good thing I did. He gets one over to right field. That's a base hit, and that scores the run. It's a 2 nothing lead for the Red Sox, and that'll bring up Bill Kerrigan. So Thony gets it done. Bill Burns continues to give up runs, and 2 nothing. and the Senators are looking worse and worse. Here comes Kerrigan, and uh, the <laughs> should be a catcher playing first. He rolls a 65 for a 35. It's a pop-up to street, the catcher for the out. And so we'll go to the uh, top of the fourth inning. I can't remember if I have Kerrigan in because that's what they did in real life or if I have him in because I just wanted to get him in. I, if, I need to take notes on this sort of thing. Here comes Bob Gainley. You guys can look it up. Let me know down below. Gainley rolls a 31 for a 9. Pop up to the uh, left side. The third baseman, Lord, grabs that one away. It's the nice thing about YouTube. People will tell you what you did is wrong. Uh, it's even worse if I would stream, right? If I stream, we'd have people all over the comment section. Here's Dillahanty. Rolls a 43 for a 29. See a little ground ball back to Seacott, who throws the first. Two away, and here comes Jerry Freeman. Jerry's roll 32 for a 26. Ground ball to second. McConnell has that, throws over to first for the out. And so we go now to the uh, bottom of the fourth inning, and uh, it's a 2 0 lead for the Red Sox. Up is Heine Wagner. Wagner's roll 11 for a 0. And next rolls a 16 for a 7. That'll be a single to right. That'll bring up Lou Krigger, the catcher, and he has instructions to bunt, of course. So Heine Wagner finally gets another base hit here, trying to break out of a slump. And Krigger's roll 31 for 36. It's going to be a pass ball on uh, the catcher's street. And so Wagner up at second. Suddenly you don't want to bunt. Krigger will swing away, so they take the bunt off. And look at that. That rolls a 66. I'm not sure how well you can see the, uh, the uh, white die here. Let's see what we can do. And, yeah, I'm just making things worse. Um, but it is a, uh, yeah, I'm not able to block that light. It's a uh, 66, and uh, that will put us here in the second column. And it's a 63 there. That will be a 6. It's going to be a double, and uh, that will score the run, and it makes it a 3 nothing lead for Boston. And here comes Eddie Seacott, so watch out. Here comes Boston. And if Philadelphia and Cleveland slip, then Boston's back in this thing. Here comes Eddie. He rolls a 21 for a 13, and he'll strike out. So there's one away. Amy McConnell up there now. Maybe we should have been bunting with Eddie. It's it's hard to tell. When you're up three or four, I tend not to. But you remember the other day we looked in real life, and we saw that for the Giants, they were bunting up by four. So maybe we should do it. McConnell rolls a 53, four, and 18, changed to a 16. That's going to be a single over to center field. And it's a good throw there by the center fielder, Milan, who was able to get the runner out of the plate. So there'll be two away, and uh, McConnell moved up to second on that throw. Here comes Harry Lord. And his roll 56, 434. It's a pop-up over to second base. Who wants it? It's going to be playable there for Delahanty, the second baseman, for the out. And we go to the top of the fifth inning. It's a 3-0 uh, lead now for Boston. Here's George McBride. McBride hitting 256. Walked and was picked off by the catcher of all people today, and his roll is a 42 for a 23. Changed to 36. That'll be a ball. Those 23s pop up in strange places in Skeetersoft land. Next roll is a 16 for a 28. Ground ball to shore. Wagner feels that and throws to first. One away. Bill Shipka now. And Bill rolls a 53 for a 19. Changed to a 20. And that's going to be an air as that's hit over to McConnell. And he can't feel that one ride. 
that's uh, going to be in there for an error. So Gabby Street comes up now. Remember we were talking about Street the other day with the one now 116 average. And he's back up. He struck out once today, and he's up to bunt. And the roll is a 16 for a 26. And so it's a good bunt to the right side. Freeman fields it. Flip. I'm sorry, Freeman, wrong team. Kerrigan fields it and flips over to McConnell. Kerrigan, the catcher, playing first base. Two away. And here's uh, Milan with the uh, Shipkin scoring position. And the roll is a 12 for a 24. There is a little E roll. It's a 26 just missing the reins. That's bad luck. And it's a little pop up. And that'll be caught by Heine Wagner for the out. And so we go now to the uh, bottom of the fifth inning. See, we don't go too fast. We're only halfway through this game, 10 minutes into the video. Here comes Gavi Kravis. Gavi's 0 for 1 with a walk. Scored a run. Roll 55 for an 8. It's a ground ball to short. Played uh, on two hops by McBride over to first. One away. Doc Gessler comes up now. And he rolls a 24 for 31. Fly ball deep to center, but uh, that'll be caught there by uh, Milan. Two away. Up now is Jack Thoney. And his roll 33 for a 7. So it's a single to right field. That's hit number 10 for the uh, Red Sox. We're really hammering it off of Bill Burns. Bill Kerrigan comes up now. And the roll 56 for 34. There is a little E roll to worry about, as always. And it's a 53, so it's out of the range. It's a pop up on the infield. Uh, McBride, the shortstop, will grab it this time. And uh, we go to the top of the 6. 3 0 the lead. Here's the pitcher, Bill Burns, hitting 222. Good for a pitcher, good for anybody in 08. And he rolls a 15 for a 10. That'll be a single to center. They should have Burns hitting above Gabby Street, I would say. And here comes Otis Clymer, the leadoff hitter. He's just a hair under 300. Now, Burns, of course, is slow, doesn't have um, any sort of 11, and you're down by three. So we will swing away. And the rolls a 42 for a 13. So it's all academic anyway, one away. And here comes Bob Gainley. His roll also swinging away, 43-4-29. That's a uh, little comebacker over to Seacott, who turns around, throws to the shortstop Wagner, covering at second base for the force. Two away, and here comes Delahanty. And Jim's roll, 24-4-31. It's a fly ball deep to center. Thony's got that one for the out. Go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and it remains a 3-0 lead for the Red Sox. Here comes Heine Wagner. Wagner, Krigger, than Seacott. Wagner's one for two with a single score to run. His roll 54 for a 45. Fly ball to right. Climber's got that one. One away. Lou Krieger now. And he rolls a 62 for a 12. There is a little E roll. And it's going to be a 63 out of the range. That's a little ground ball over to first. Freeman, uh, the first baseman, feels that goes to the back himself. And there's two away. Here now Eddie Seacott. And look at that. He rolls an 11 for a zero. He's already one for two today. He's going to get another hit. It's a 16 for an 11. So he gets a single steal second. Everybody's hitting. 11 hits now for the Red Sox, and here comes McConnell with uh, the pitcher in scoring position. Two singles today for Ampey. Was thrown out in the first, trying to steal. And his roll, you see that? 66 for a zero. We'll see what Ampey can do. Then 63 for a seven. That's a single to right, and that scores the pitcher. It's a 4 nothing lead. Here now is Harry Lord, and we got to start wondering about Bill Burns. So it, we'll we'll slow this down a little bit to talk about the thought process. Burns is still a B. According to the Skatersoft fatigue system, he's not really lost his effectiveness yet, but uh, the question is not what does the game say. The question is what does the game say, like the game that we're playing, right? And we need to be true to what would happen in real life and true to what's actually happening in the game. I think we leave Burns in for the time being, but uh, with two outs here in the bottom of the six. But if this keeps happening, you got to take him out. Lord rolls a 42 for a 22, and he's hit by the pitch. And I think that's got to be it for Burns. Bill Burns just is not having it today, and we'll figure out who we go to. You want to have some fun? Let's have some fun. We're going to go with Henry Gehring here. So the grade one pitcher. Of course, he'll come up. Yeah, look at this. 14 innings pitched. That's, uh, that's what happens when... Uh, you need a relief pitcher, and you're playing the game by yourself, and you're like, oh, let's throw this guy in. I don't use him. <laughs> He's got a 3.86 ERA, 327 batted against average. He may not last long. And Kravitz rolls a 43 for 29. It's a, a, a ground ball back to the pitcher, and Gehring throws over to the uh, first baseman, uh, Freeman, for the out. And so he does what he's supposed to do. We go to the top of the seventh, and it's a 4 nothing lead. Here now, Jerry Freeman for the Senators. Jerry's roll 55 for an eight, and that's a single to left center field. Only the third hit that Seacott has given up. That'll bring up McBride. You're not bunting now, down by four. 
Bryce roll 12 for a 25. Ground ball, and that'll be to uh, McConnell, Wagner, and then over to Kerrigan for the double play. Two away. Here comes Bill Shipka. And he rolls an 11 for a zero. And has a 55 for a two, and that's a deep to left center field. That one will split Kravitz and Thoney. Gets all the way to the wall. Shipka gets around with the triple, and that'll bring up uh, the uh, catcher Street. Now, if it was anybody but Gabby Street, you'd be happy. And his roll 53 for an 18. Uh, let me undo that. Not 553. So 53 for an 18. Changed to 19 by the randomizer. And that's going to be an error on Lord. So the third baseman has that one eat him up. And that scores the run. Red Sox, uh, not exactly the best fielding team, especially on the infield. And that'll bring up Clyde Milan. So 4-1 to one now the score. Milan rolls a 13 for a 14. And now Seacott is starting to waver. That brings up Gehring, and uh, he came in for one batter, and that was it. So we're going to take him out. Ooh. Dave Elitzer comes in. I think I've used him pretty frequently. He's got eight plate appearances. So he comes in with two outs, runners on a first and second. No home run powers. They don't even think about it. There's a roll. A uh, roll is a 46 for 27. It's a ground ball over to third. Fielded by Lord this time and throws to first for the out, and that'll do it. We go to the uh, bottom of the seventh inning, and it's uh, still a 4-1 lead for the Red Sox. Here comes uh, Doc Gessler, but we need a pitcher. Now, this happens to me sometimes where I get real excited, and we go to the next uh, half inning, and then I forget that we're supposed to have somebody out there to pitch. The game, at least, thankfully, does tell you, right? But um, it's kind of a funny mental image if uh, you're, the, the manager is sitting there trying to get the players to uh, start playing, and he hasn't realized that he forgot to put a pitcher out. Um, here comes Gessler. Gessler's rolls a 34 for 44. And the little E rolls a 12, which is within the range. That's going to be an error on the uh, shortstop. And uh, that's an error on McBride. And that's the first error on the Senators. And so that'll bring up Jack Thoney with a runner on a first. Three run lead for the Red Sox. Thoney will swing away. He's hitting 533 in his 17 plate appearances. You think I should have been starting him? Roll 21 for a 30. Fly ball over to left. Gainley's got that one away. Bill Kerrigan comes up now. And rolls a 61 for a 32. Fly ball over to right, and Climber's got that one too away. And here comes Heine Wagner. And the roll, 31 for a 9, and that's a ground ball to third. Shipka fields that one and throws to first for the out. We go to the top of the eighth inning now, and it's a 4-1 to one game. Here comes Otis Climber for the Senators. And the roll, 55 for an A. That'll be a single by Climber, and uh, he's then thrown out trying to steal second because of the little C. One away. Bob Gainley now. Rolls a 15, 4, and 11. That's a single to the left, and he steals successfully. So the Senator's really trying to push it. Here comes Jim Delahanty hitting 292. He's driven in 15, but I was 0 for 3 today. And his roll is 66 for a 0. Here we go. And a 36 for a 6. That's a double to left center field, and it's now a 4 to 2 game. Eddie just uh, holding on by the skin of his teeth, and that'll bring up uh, Jer uh, Jerry Freeman. One away, two run lead. And it rolls a 22 for a 7. That's a single to right, and it's now a one-run lead. So Freeman gets it done, and here come the Senators. George McBride comes up now, and now your strategy changes a bit. McBride will bunt, and we'll try to set it up. Roll 26 for a 27, and he misses two chances to bunt. Two strikes on him. Next roll is a 51 for a 9, and that's a ground ball over to third. Fielded by Lord, who throws to first for the out. Two away, and here comes Shipka. Four to three ball game. Bills rolls a 63 for 30. It's a fly ball over to the left, and Kravith has that one for the out. That takes us now to the uh, bottom of the eighth inning. It's a four to three ball game. Lou Krigger, and then we have a decision to make. The roll 36 for 33. Pop up on the infield, and it'll be caught there by Delahanty, one away. And so what do we do with Seacott? Do we leave him in the ball game, try to give him a complete game? That's what the Q rating would dictate. Or do we take him out now, try to get an insurance run? I think we leave him in. I mean, I have a personal bias. I like complete games. But um, I also uh, think that he's been pitching fairly well. We'll see what happens, though. And the rolls of 46 for a 13. It's a strikeout, two away. First strikeout there for Eli Cates. Here's Amy McConnell. And he rolls a 46 for a 29. It's a comebacker to Cates, who throws over to first for the out. And here we go to the top of the ninth inning. So it's a one-run game. Gabby Street is not going to hit for himself, I'll tell you that. It's going to be John Warner who comes up. I don't even need to look at his card. I know it's better than he's doing better than Street was. That's not hard. And here comes Warner. He'll be the new catcher if they tie it. 
Rolls a 42 for a 38. Change to 36. That's a ball. Next roll 21 for a 30. Pop up to left. Kravath has that. One away. Clyde Milan is 1 for 2 with a walk. He rolls a 21 for a 30. It's a fly ball to left. There's 2 away. And here's Eli Kate. So uh, we'll see if Seacott can do the complete game. Ollie Pickering is the uh, new pinch hitter here for the Senators. 2 away in the top of the ninth. 4 to 3 the score. And the rules of 15, 4, and 11. And so uh, Pickering is able to get on base. And the plot thickens a little bit. So there's a tying run now on second base after Pickering got the uh, single and um, the uh, stolen base. Otis Clymer comes up. He's one for four. Seacob will stay in this ball game. We'll see if we can get that little bit more squeezed out of him. Nine hits now for the Senators. And the roll is a 44, 4, and 8. That's a base hit. And that scores the run. And uh, Climber then is out trying to steal second afterwards. And hold on to your horses because uh, this ball game is tied. So Otis Climber comes through with a clutch base hit in the uh, top of the ninth. And uh, the uh, Senators have tied this one. And uh, now we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. And we have some changes to make. So Warner, see, he slotted automatically into that catcher position, which is good. Now, the part where we have a headache is we have to figure out who in the world is going to come in the pitch. And, uh, well, I mean, do we want to be really mean and put Casey Patton in? Probably not. Probably put uh, Burt Keeley back into this game. So one thing I wish that uh, Skatersoft had with the computer game is a built-in fatigue system because it's very difficult in this game uh, to figure out who you've used and who you haven't used and is one of the great weaknesses of the way this is programmed, right? It's not easy for me to look and to say, oh, I used this guy the other day, so I obviously will use that one. And so some guys will be underused, some guys overused, like the guy with uh, a one rating who's thrown 18 innings now. Here's a Lord, and he rolls the 23 for a 32. It's a fly ball over to right. Climber has that one. One away. Up is Gabby Kravath. And Kravath rolls a 22 for a 7. There's a single to right field and hold on to everything. So bottom of the ninth inning, the Red Sox get a runner on with one man out. And um, I tell you, the Red Sox have been hitting like uh, crazy here. Here comes Doc Gessler. He's hitting 321 now. Of course, he hasn't had that many plate appearances. Kravath only has a 10. And so, you now the question is uh, not what I want to do. I want to look at his card. The question is, do we bunt with Gessler and go to Thony? Or do we uh, swing away with uh, Gessler and hope he doesn't hit into a double play? Gessler has a little bit more power on the card because of that uh, third zero. Um, Thony also, I mean... You look at it, you can look at it in theory. The thing is, the only base hit number that um, isn't helpful is a uh, nine because Keeley is a C, and uh, I think they have equal numbers of nines as I look at it. So that's not really going to make a huge difference, right? The big difference is what would you actually do in 1908 and what the correct strategy is. And we're going to go with that. We're going to do a bunt here. That's one of those things that we've talked about a little bit before, which is: Are you managing according to the history? You're managing according to what you would do. I mean, it's your replay. You do whatever you want. But let's try doing it according to the history. And the rolls of 46 for a 13. That'll be a foul strike. Fortunately, it's not like what happens with the runner on at third when he bunt and hit a 13. The next roll is a 13 for a 14, and that is a walk. And that really changes everything. Man, oh, man. So Gessler gets up to bunt and ends up taking a walk, and here comes Jack Thony. That's another one, by the way, of the uh, weaknesses of the sacrifice boards and app and... Uh, uh, by uh, association, Skeetersoft, the uh, 14 for a walk with a runner on at first base. Now, if uh, Keeley had a Z, he could have stopped it, but um, I find that not to happen as frequently in real life as it does in these games. 13 hits for the Red Sox, 10 for the Senators, 4 for the score. Here comes Jack Thoney with only one out. He's 3 for 4, so he's swinging away. He's driven in 2 today. And his rolls a 42 for a 13. What a strikeout there by Keeley. 2 down. And here's Bill Kerrigan, the catcher. I'm sorry, the first baseman. And it uh, says catcher on the card, so I get confused. And um, we may want to make a uh, change. And uh, let's see what happens. I'm not too worried about this. We'll put Bob Lunglaub in, and we'll have him uh, be the new first baseman. He's the guy who I was uh, had had a first before. And his role is a 36 for 32 Fly ball over to right field. That'll be caught by Clymer, and we will go to extra innings. Unglaub slots into first base, and Eddie Seacott, it looks like, will go back out there. 
Eddie, uh, down to being a D now in Skeeter Soft Parlance. Top of the 10th, and the roll from Gainley's a 35-4-40, changed to 36 as the ball. 4-4 four, four the game. His roll is a 25 for a 20. That's a single over to center field, and that'll bring up Jim Delahanty, and there's a lot of silence here at uh, Huntington Avenue grounds. Here comes Delahanty. 11 hits now for the Senators. And uh, well, what do you do? Swing away with him, I think. And Gainley, does he have it? He does have the 11, so we'll do a hit and run. And that's a good call. Rolls a 15 for an 11. Single to right center. Gainley goes to third, and then Delahanty steals the base, winds up at second. Nobody out, and first base is open, and so I think you walk Jerry Freeman. So we'll walk him. Well, it would have been a 33 that would have uh, put them on top. Put them on top by managing both teams. That's a walk to Freeman. He goes over to first. Here comes uh, George McBride, and uh, we're going to bring the infield in. McBride will swing away. We're going to have him swing away. He could bunt here, but we'll have him swing away. And look at that. The rules is 66 for a zero. This is going to knock Seacott out of this game. And there's a 14 for a six. That's a double left center field. That scores two. Freeman goes over to third. And that brings up Bill Shipka. And that's it for Eddie. Hard luck now for Eddie, who was having good luck. So we went from good luck Seacott to bad luck Seacott. We'll put uh, Tex Pruitt out there. He's one of these guys I love to put out there. He's got 12 innings pitched. Shipka and then Warner. And uh, I think that uh, we'll pull the infield in, but we'll pitch to Bill. We're not going to do any more intentional walking here. And the rule, 14-4-43. Fly ball to the left, and it's a shallow fly. Kravitz has it. Runners hold. One away. Here comes John Warner, and in comes the infield again. Roll 62 for a 12, and that's a strikeout two away. And here comes Clyde Milan. His rule, 26 for a 30. Fly ball to the left, and Kravitz has that for the out. And so we go to the bottom of the 10th. Heine Wagner up there against Burke Keeley, who stays in this game. Wagner today, one for four. And he rolls a 65 for a 35, but there is a little E-roll. It's a 21 within the range, so that will be changed to 19. Air on Shipka, the uh, third baseman. And so now there are two errors on both teams. And here comes Lou Krigger. Wagner does have the ability to fly, and Krigger is going to hit and run with him. Lou is one for four, has that double. And the rule 51 for 14. Wagner has second base stolen. And so uh, there's a runner in scoring position with nobody out. Whose next rule is a 56. However, 434 pop up. And it'll be the second baseman, Delahanty, making the catch for the out. One away. Here comes Tex. And uh, there goes Tex. He's coming out of this ball game. And uh, you remember the other day that we had this um, uh, situation with uh, Larry Gardner and uh, the question of uh, whether we should put a guy in like this? We're going to do it here again. So the funny thing about Gardner, and we'll take some time. I, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on. Funny thing about Gardner, I looked him up. He was 3 for 10 in real life. But look at this card. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, out of 36, right? So, I mean, what is what is that? Well, uh, I'll take a quick look here. Let me see if I can get my uh, get my uh, calculator up and going. He's got 18 hit numbers on this card. Now, I know that they're not all always going to be hits, um, but uh, 18 divided by uh, 36 gives us uh, 500, right? So, <laughs> I mean, he's got a card that allows him to hit 500, right? Now, I know that there's, you know, a couple of eights, a couple of nines, I've got to wonder, though, about how this card was constructed because the problem is that he's probably not going to face a bunch of A and B pitchers since he had so few plate appearances. Now, the other thing about Larry Gardner, I was thinking about doing one of these uh, specials on the unknown players, but he wasn't an unknown. He actually had a pretty long major league career, right? He was mostly a uh, third baseman for defensive purposes. This is his rookie year, and he did pretty well. The other thing we have to wonder about that I haven't looked at is whether Gardner technically was even playing with the Red Sox at this time. And that's another story altogether. So Larry Garner will come into this ballgame just like he did. I think it was the last game we played. So all the overused people can go in the comments and tell me that this is the wrong move. And the roll is a 66 for a 7. Um, and that's going to be a single to right field, and that will score 1. And so uh, Gardner has done it again in late innings for the Red Sox and makes this a 6-5 to five ball game. And uh, that will uh, bring up Amby McConnell. McConnell's three for five. Gardner has no wheels. 
one away, bottom of the 10th. Six to five to score, 14 hits for the Red Sox. And look at that, it rolls a 12 for a 25. That's a ground ball over to second. It'll be uh, Delahanty to McBride and on to Freeman for the double play. And so the Red Sox do get one run, but they fall one short, and that's the end of this one. Six to five, the final score, and I hope you enjoy that one. Lots of drama, lots of intrigue in this game, and uh, there's a lot of questions, too, about uh, whether we're doing the right thing with Larry Gardner. I'd love to know what you think. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.